Hi, my name is Lucas Perez. I'm the Education Coordinator at the San Diego Museum of Art, and today I'm going to teach you how to write the Chinese character for dragon in a cursive calligraphic script. We're going to be working from this lovely Japanese hanging wall scroll in Gallery 8, our Japanese gallery, by Mugake Buneki, and it's from the late 19th century. You'll see in the center there's the large ca cursive calligraphic character for dragon. Um, there's not much of a difference between Chinese and Japanese calligraphy. Uh, essentially, Japanese calligraphy is based on classical Chinese calligraphy and the two countries share the practice. Uh, before we get started, let me go through the things you're going to need to follow along with me today. Uh, obviously, you're going to need a calligraphy writing brush, a fude in Japanese, as it's called. Um, I like ones that have at least an inch to an inch and a half long nib. Um, I often use a fudeoki, which is basically a place to set your brush and keep the ink off of your table. I'm left-handed, so I'm gonna put it up here to the left. You're gonna need a dish for ink. Um, I prefer these white dishes to the black ink stones simply because when you add ink to this and you dilute it, you could see how diluted it becomes. Uh, in the black ink stone, it becomes a little more difficult to see that. Uh, in addition to the dish, you're also gonna need a paperweight. In Japanese, it's called a bunchin. Uh, this is a really cool one from Mexico. It's uh, Quetzalcoatl, it's made of silver. He's quite neat. And I figured today, since we're talking about dragons, this would be rather appropriate. Um, you're gonna need uh, a water dropper in order to dilute your ink if it's too thick. Um, this one's designed specifically for calligraphy, but you could use an eyedropper or you could use a shot glass or something like that. Uh, you're going to, again, you need some kind of uh, sumi ink. Uh, this is the kind that I ordered from Japan. Uh, it's really, really thick. Uh, you often need to dilute this with some water, but you can get some at a store, a Japanese 99 cent store called Daiso. It, uh, they have a wide variety of calligraphy products and they have sumi ink which is quite uh, good. Um, you're also going to need a paper, which you can also get at Daiso. Um, it's a specific salt size called Hanchi size paper. It's a little bit larger than your regular eight and a half by 11 calligraphy paper, and it comes in packs of 60. Um, other than that, you're also going to need a piece of felt or a mat, and it's called a Shitajiki in Japanese, and this will keep the ink off of your table once again. So before we get started, we need to fold our paper into quadrants so that we can have um, four places to practice writing the Chinese character again for dragon in a cursive script. So first we're going to fold it in half widthwise. And when you're folding, make sure not to overly crease the paper. You don't want it to be really, really sharp. Um, that'll end up kind of affecting the calligraphy. So you want to make sure it's kind of like, you know, a little soft, a little sharp, something in between. And then you're going to fold it lengthwise once. And then you're going to fold it lengthwise again. So you end up something with like something like this. And this will give you your center line so that you can make sure that your characters are balanced. So we're going to begin by kind of putting one sheet of paper here on the shitajiki on your mat, and then we use a bunshin, okay? And now let's talk about how to hold your brush. Um, I like to hold it like a flute, a vertical flute, basically. Uh, you wanna make sure that your brush is always completely vertical. So in other, in other words, none of this sort of holding it like a pen uh, where it's at an angle, a 45 degree angle. You want it completely vertical the entire time. Um, I, why I say a flute grip is because if you th imagine you have your three little fingers kind of like playing a flute. So next we need to pour out our ink. So let me go ahead and go to the overhead camera. Um, when you pour out your ink, you wanna make sure that, again, it's not too thick or too diluted. So these white plates are fantastic. Here, let me move that into the center a little bit more. I'm just gonna pour out a small amount just because this is quite uh, powerful stuff. And it's a little bit different from India ink, what you would find like in a, in a uh, fountain pen or something like that. It's quite thick and viscous. Uh, because it's so thick and viscous, I'm gonna add a couple of drops of water and remember just to add a few drops, not too much because if you dilute it too much it's difficult to get it um, to be darker again. So you want to make sure that it's just a few drops at a time. You can always add more but it's difficult to take out once you've added too much. So essentially it's three strokes to create the character. I'm going to make sure that my ink is well loaded onto the brush and I'm going to kind of scrape it off on the sides to kind of reconstitute a point and let's go ahead and begin. So for the little top, uh, for the 1010 up at the top, I'm going to push forward 
and flick back. And that'll give me that expressive, cool uh, shape up the top. Uh, I'm gonna kind of come in at a 45 degree angle, pull, come on down. I'm gonna stop, tap, 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 flick back up. And if you want, you can do a bit of a dry brush effect right here. And then at the end, I'm gonna create the tail of the dragon by pushing really, really hard and then flicking up. And that'll give you a cool kind of dragon shape. If you imagine like a Chinese dragon. Um, and then the last one is a little dot right there. And I'm gonna just push down and then pull up and that'll give me that interesting um, effect. So that's basically the three steps um, to create your dragon in a cursive script. So let's do it one more time, okay? Now you can watch me from the frontal camera. So again, I'm gonna push forward, flick back, come in at a 45, pull on up, come on down, tap, tap, tap at the end. I'm gonna pull back up and swirl around, push very hard for the end to create that cool dragon tail at the end. And then we need a little bit of a dot, the ten ten as they say in Japanese at the side. So that's essentially how you can create your cursive dragon. Uh, now let's go ahead and just keep practicing just because uh, like anything that's very difficult, calligraphy requires a lot of practice. So it's important to keep practicing over and over and over again. So one more time, here we go. Actually, if we wanna take a look at this view, we can kind of follow along to see how it looks in re relation to Mugake Buneki's version of the cursive dragon script. So we're gonna push forward, pull back, come in at a 45 degree, pom come on up. And at the end here, you're gonna tap, 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 pull up. And if you want, you can create kind of a cool dry brush effect here. And at the end, where the dragon's tail would be, you're gonna push the brush very hard and flick up, and then you create a cool tail. Now you need the little tent tent here over on the side, so I'm gonna push down and then pull back up, and that'll give you a really cool, expressive, uh, kind of pointy top to it. And it gives it a sense of motion, doesn't it? So let's do it one more time. <clears throat> now, social, uh, the cursive script in Japanese, uh, the character means basically like a grass script. And the reason why they call it a grass script is because it looks like, or supposed to look like, flowing leaves of grass in the wind. So it's a very cool image when you're thinking of this particular style of calligraphy, okay? So let's go ahead and now move to our second set so that we can continue practicing together, okay? I like to say that you should practice a character when you first encounter a new character at least 30 to 50 times. I mean, honestly, you should do it a lot more, but at least 30 to 50 times to get a good sense of how to write the character. So let's go ahead and go back to the overhead <clears throat> and do it one more time. And again, calligraphy is a lot like, I say gymnastics, where you have to kind of memorize a routine, you have to remember all the different little parts where you have to stick the different parts of the routine, and then you again have to stick the landing and everything has to be perfect. And often you don't really know, is this gonna be perfect because there are so many extenuating circumstances. Um, you know, you can make a little mistake, the ink could be, uh, there could be too much ink on your brush, the paper could be not cooperative, sometimes that happens. <laughs> or sometimes you're having an off day, you know, like you just, uh, you're not feeling the calligraphy on that particular day. So a lot of things will affect how perfect of calligraphy you can make. So we're gonna keep practicing, right? And again, on the side, you're gonna pull over and push up like that, very nice. Uh, take a look here uh, on Mugake Buneki's version. Um, you can see on the right that 1010 I've been discussing, this section right here, um, you can see that he's actually come in and painted a little dragon, um, which is often, or which is really cool on this particular artwork. So he kind of did a bit of painting and he did the calligraphy. Um, so it's kind of a little joke. Um, obviously, if you didn't know the central character was dragon, I don't think you would have spotted that, right? So I'm gonna push down and pull on up. Um, let me show you something else actually too. Uh, this is what the character for dragon should look like. If you see in the center of your screen, that's what the character for dragon should look like in Kaisho, uh, which is a block script. And this is probably the script that everyone is more familiar with. Um, it's that blocky style. Um, and you can see how that block style has been very, very abstracted into this cursive style, the, the social, or in Chinese again, it's called Saoshu. And again, um, 
when you're talking about Chinese and Japanese calligraphy, um, there's not much of a difference uh, as far as um, the way that the, the characters are constructed because the characters need to be legible. Um, and that includes uh, bo the both ch the Chinese language and the Japanese language. So um, they need to be legible, so they have to follow a particular rules. So this is our last set together. So let's do it really well this time. Hopefully we can get a couple good samples. Um, and what I often do when I'm trying to find my best example to see what I did right, I just kind of take all of my sheets of practice and I line them up and I kind of look over them like a bird's eye view and I see which one I really like and then that will be my final one. Um, you'll often see or you'll often find out when you're doing calligraphy that you can't plan the final one or the perfect one. Um, there is no plan. It's just simply um, it kind of flows out of you subconsciously and it's also um, a sort of coordination between your mind and your hands and your sense of balance and your composition, um, your ability with the brush, ink, uh, the paper, how fast the paper absorbs, ink, all of these things you have to think of as a calligrapher when you're doing this type of calligraphy. Um, and it's a lot to think about or to process at one time when you're a beginner, but as you uh, become more and more adept by, at doing calligraphy, um, you'll find that these challenges become a way of becoming um, extremely creative. Uh, they're ways for becoming creative, so it's an interesting way of kind of <laughs> breaking the rules um, once you've learned them, right? So this is the last version. Again, I'm going to tap, tap, tap at the bottom, pull, pull on up, and then I'm going to create the kind of curly Q arabesque Chinese dragon here on the right side, if you could see it almost looks pictographic and it's really cool to kind of practice and see what kind of cool effects you can create for the dragon's tail right here and don't forget the little 1010 on the side so I'm going to push down and then pull on up all right so that's it that's how you write uh, the Chinese dragon or character for dragon in a cursive script um, I hope you enjoyed this video stay tuned for more content coming from the San Diego Museum of Art thank you